So the first lesson in this unit was a general introduction to living spaces and the sort of things that make a good living space and the reasons why uh, people are attached to them. What we focus on in this lesson are the reasons uh, for uh, why some living spaces are considered bad. A couple of outlines of some various things here. Um, we've got four examples of places in the top left is a place called Chernobyl. Uh, it's currently, well nowadays it's in the Ukraine, uh, but in 1986 when it was part of the country called the USSR, uh, there was a very bad, very, very bad uh, nuclear accident in a nuclear power station. And it caused an awful lot of radiation and pollution to be uh, put all over the area. It actually affected uh, places all around the world, even uh, in Britain. There were uh, places in Wales in particular whereby the wind had blown the radioactive waste over uh, to here and it had contaminated our soil and it had got into our food and things like that. This is one of the worst places to live uh, in the world for environmental reasons because if you go there um, you will have very high doses of radiation. There's very high uh, numbers of cancer cases and birth defects and all sorts of other awful things that happen there. Top right, capital city of Iraq, Baghdad. Political reasons are reasons why Baghdad is not a nice place to live. War, conflict and violence. But of course there are places in the world that are considered good places to live. This place here a uh, place called Sandbanks in England, considered the fourth most expensive place to live uh, in the world, and Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. So, just in terms of mapping where some of these places are, um, overcrowding, deindustrialization and unemployment, war, violence, environmental problems, poverty, disease, drought, these are all things that make a living space not a particularly nice place. So they can all be broken down into four different uh, uh, criteria. Economic, political, environmental and social factors. Make sure that you can recount at least a couple of each of these factors uh, in an exam if needs be. So looking at it from a, a, a standpoint closer to home, um, here's an example of a woman who lives in Peckham in South London, her name is Annie, and she is leaving her place where she's lived for many, many years. Reasons why she's leaving, we can break it down into four main sections. Um, uh, things about the type of housing she lives in, um, things about the type of area she lives, and information about herself as well. She's old, she's retired, she lives on her own. That's one reason why she's going to be leaving. She's also got, um, was recently mugged when she was going to the shops. So that's information there about Peckham and crime rates and some of the social problems there. Also the actual housing itself, lots of social housing, council housing uh, in Peckham. And the, the housing isn't particularly nice. Her neighbours aren't nice. There's a lot of antisocial behaviour going on. Um, so... Living spaces, the reasons why people don't like to live in places can be very um, focused on a particular area, like Peckham. These two terms here, very important, gentrification and social segregation. Very important that you know what those two terms mean. Gentrification is when rich people move into a poor area, spend a load of money, improve the houses, and then rich people move in. Social segregation is when you've got rich people living in one place, poor people living in another place, or you could also use social segregation from a cultural or ethnic point of view. Particular ethnic groups living in one place, another particular ethnic group living in another place. Um, so, gentrification can, in some cases, improve an area. Uh, there are a number of different ways that it can do that. And a typical exam question that you might see, describe reasons why people may consider a place a bad living space. Four marks. Make one point, explain it. Make another point, explain it. Very, very simple technique, uh, which we cannot forget. Um, there's also some other key terms. The spiral of multiple deprivation, which we didn't quite go over uh, in the lesson. 
but it's certainly something that if we want to find out more about, you certainly can in lessons or as part of your independent revision um, and uh, homework.